Wilshire Boulevard and Fairfax Avenue in Los Angeles. With the constant bustle of museums, shopping, business, and traffic, it's safe to say that it's one of the busiest spots in all of America. And thanks to Mother Nature and some really fabulous filmmakers getting together, it's soon going to be one of the hottest spots. Now, no one has ever seen a lava-spewing, fire-throwing force rip through one of America's largest urban centers, but you're about to. If you stick with me and H as I take you behind the scenes of Volcano. make Los Angeles, a place teeming with life and activity, come to a complete and utter standstill? How about a volcano? All right, I know what you're thinking. In Southern California, that's the last thing we need, but it's exactly what we got. And it all began with something you're all very familiar with, a little earthquake. <laughs> Disaster. It's a, a big shark, it's a dragon, it's a big, bad volcano. It's so uncontrollable. You know, we don't create it, and I think we're fascinated by the things we don't create, and we want to control a power greater than ourselves. Dad! There's so many branches of disaster and trouble that it, you know, that can come from it. It's the perfect natural disaster for a movie. Everybody out! It's coming after you. You know, it's unstoppable. It's that hot, burning, molten lava. You better get out of its way. The genesis of the movie was uh, writer John Armstrong came to me, and we were throwing out ideas. And he, he threw out an idea to me about doing a movie about a volcano. And we came up with the extra added spin of taking a volcano and putting it in a city. We thought, why not set it in our hometown, Los Angeles? And it just seemed like it was the perfect place. Mitch, I don't know how to describe this, but the tarpets themselves are on fire, and they're right now spilling out onto Wilshire Boulevard. This lava starts to spread throughout the city, and to complicate matters, gets into the subway tunnels and starts spreading laterally under the surface of the city, and it's going to come up somewhere. I don't think we've ever seen a movie like this that takes place in a huge urban environment. And L.A., I think, is a place that everybody loves to hate, and it's a great opportunity to see Los Angeles get trashed. What are you looking at, Mike? Fire, heavy, underground and structural. And there's an immense column of smoke coming up out of the tar pits. And something like meteors coming up out of the smoke. Yeah, Sound like you said something like a meteor. Look out! My character works for the Office of Emergency Management. Rourke's from um, somewhere in Missouri, where he's been used to uh, trying to manage the Mississippi River. But he's not experienced in volcanoes. Action! You want me to call Olber and tell him the demonstrable risk he's looking for is uh, lava? No, I want you to give me time to do my work. Why, because the lake went up a few degrees? No, because seven men baked to death down there, and nobody knows why. I play Dr. Amy Barnes, seismologist slash volcanologist. The tunnel's insulating it. It's like a lava tube. It's gonna go through the tunnels until it hits a block. When it hits a block, it's gonna punch through. You mean erupt? Yes! They do their jobs very well. One of them is a scientist, that's my character, so she has a more of a scientific background and actually has done research on this, whereas Rourke Mine works to make the city work under disaster. So as the two of them come together with their absolutely equal passions, they gel together, one having the information that the other one needs to solve the problem. I need a demolitions team, LAPD, National Guard. Put as many people in front of it as it takes. We're gonna take this thing to the ocean. When they think it's just an earthquake, you know, like Californians do, oh, well, you know, I've seen worse, so, you know, everything's fine. But then when it gets really bad, uh, people begin to pay the price. On a thematic level, the movie's really about a city that's sort of divided on a lot of levels in terms of race and in terms of class. People in the city sort of have to put all that aside 
in order to battle a much greater common enemy. Get out of my face. Hey, if I'm in your face, you're gonna know it, all right, bro? Once upon a time, there was a city whose inhabitants bickered among themselves, and the noise of their quarreling woke the dragon that lay beneath the streets, and it came out of its cave with fire and brimstone. And, and threatened them, and they all manned the walls together, shoulder to shoulder, and they fought it off. This is a film about people fighting an enemy. I think that's the most important thing. I think that's what makes this movie engaging and interesting. It's the people that get involved in how they work together to fight the enemy, and it just happens that we have a giant, hot enemy. So how do you coordinate all this? Hundreds of actors working at time in the elements? Building a set that's five city blocks long and then setting it on fire every night? It takes vision. And that was the job of the volcano filmmakers. Ah. Yeah, I? Roll camera. I first got the script and I looked at it and I thought, this is great, this is a wonderful ride. I can see this vividly in my head. The only problem is getting what's in my head actually onto a piece of film. You know, the logistical problem is just enormous in, in dealing with that amount of fire, that number of extras, that amount of destruction, buildings, uh, ablaze, whatever. What Mick is trying to go after is several layers of natural phenomenon that's happening that, that really uh, impact the people around it. Kelly. This was just a movie that was of such a huge magnitude. I don't think there have been many movies that have ever been made that took this kind of logistic coordination. Whether it's the amount of extras, whether it's the amount of special effects, the fire, the wind, the ash, everything is bigger than life. Everything is enormous. I would say 60% of this movie is created. And so it was, how do we make a geyser? How do we make a big ash cloud? How do we build a mountain? How do we make lava? Those were the hardest problems that we had to figure out. Technically, this is a, a huge movie. They say, you know, a movie's like a ship. Well, this is not an ordinary ship. This is an aircraft carrier. A full quarter mile of buildings, wiring, and concrete. That's the Wilshire Fairfax Quarter. And it was all recreated right here on an empty parking lot, if you can believe it. So why don't we just take a look at what it took to build the biggest set in filmmaking history. <sighs> Are responsible for recreating a set that represents a section of Wilshire Boulevard from Curzon Avenue down to Fairfax. The uh, major buildings are the Craft and Folk Art Museum, the uh, Los Angeles County Museum of Art, Peterson Auto Museum, the uh, May Company, uh, Johnny's, which is a famous Googie style coffee shop, and uh, we also have the La Brea Tar Pits. You're not just designing architecture, you're in designing an environment where things happen. You're designing a kinetic sculpture that, in this case, destroys itself before your eyes. I don't think we could have made the movie if we had to shoot on the real Wilshire Boulevard. Literally every building on the street burns, because as the lava goes you know, down the street, there's the radiant heat that catches the buildings on fire. We needed to find a giant open space, preferably paved, that we could build this huge set that's 1,700 feet long. There were very few open spaces that weren't being used for something else that we could actually build the set on. So ultimately, we decided to go up in a helicopter. We actually found this from a helicopter scout. We came here, and we laid it out, and we matched Wilshire Boulevard. It incorporates around 17 and a half acres. It's a quarter mile long. It's the largest set uh, in the world at this point. I'd say it's around 90% realistic to what really does exist. All the major landmarks are all 
uh, exact replicas of what actually exists on Wilshire Boulevard. There are hundreds, literally hundreds of trees, there are thousands of bushes, there are acres of uh, concrete, all the sidewalks and curbs were poured. All the streets, all the lampposts, all the lights, uh, we put in everything. It takes an awful lot of preparation by the production staff, the director, the special effects supervisors, the visual effects people, because what we build is very expensive, and so we shoot for building exactly what we need. That's why in a, a set like this, you'll walk around behind it and you'll see that the, the inside of the buildings and the back of the buildings are not there. To our best knowledge, we build only what is necessary for us to see. We are putting this together so fast with so much complexity and so, so many needs from so many different departments that actually all we can accomplish is what we absolutely need and no more. If you wanted to find a ready-made deep fissure down into the Earth's crust, then the La Brea Tar Pits, which everybody who lives in Los Angeles at least is familiar with, is there as a ready-made way for the lava to come up into the city. We had to simulate the La Brea tar pits. The tar actually is supposed to start bubbling from the heat. So we dug a hole in the parking lot. We painted the tar pit black. It was asphalt and painted black. We've only got water in there. We can't use real tar and what have you because we have to dispose of it. We've got an air compressor behind there. We built special little canisters and bubbling devices so that we could bubble the tar pit itself. We uh, scheduled to complete this work in 16 weeks. Uh, we actually completed it in 12. We're shooting on it in 12 weeks from groundbreaking, which is a magnificent accomplishment by uh, the prop makers and craftspeople, the painters and so forth, who put this together. It's enormous. It's huge. And it's uh, photographically uh, a dead ringer for uh, this particular section of Wilshire Boulevard. We've been shooting there for three weeks, and I still I'm amazed that Wilshire Boulevard is right in front of me and that it's blowing up all over the place. And the, 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 it's just all so grand. It's an odd sensation, uh, standing on that set and then going back to the real Wilshire Boulevard after having shot this movie. And with, in my head, everything that we did to our uh, pretend Wilshire Boulevard, trying to transpose that in your head to, to the real place is, is kind of weird and a little scary, even though it's only a movie. Every night, for six weeks straight, these guys had to figure out a way to safely set the volcano set ablaze. Why, it's a good thing they knew what they were doing. Where'd I park my car? We have fires all the way down the street and one bomb going off. We have fire bar here. All fires here on the corner. We have a bomb going off on the corner. We have our two fires on our building. We have our three geysers going up. We have the fire truck on fire. And all of our stunt action in the street. In the nature of a volcano is a big mess. Recreating this volcano requires a uh, a lot of pyrotechnics, a lot of bombs. Uh, all these buildings have been built to burn over and over again. We have a lot of uh, paper ash on the ground. We uh, are producing uh, an awful lot of spectacular effects. Action! We're overseeing all of the physical effects on this set as well as others. All the fire, ash, smoke, the normal stuff in L.A. you encounter every day. What do you have a ground level? Do you, uh, have you rigged the fence? We, we have, no, but we can. Okay, because... Like the fence to come up no, also? In the story, on the ground. yeah, oh, okay, the, the fire should be coming up from the ground, so that's where the, the lava has hit the building, so it's okay. igniting from the ground level. We had the largest uh, permit to burn, larger than any other permit that has been uh, sought after in Los Angeles, larger than backdraft, larger than everything. The, the concept of hot set uh, took on a new meeting there. You actually could feel the thermal last that picked up the helicopter as we flew uh, flew along the street. We're going through some 20,000 gallons of propane, hundreds of pounds of black powder, uh, just uh, all kinds of explosive devices on the street. It's literally a 1,700 foot long burn with palm trees that ignite like birthday candles. The propane flames were so hot 
that we had to go back and actually retrofit the buildings with more layers of fireproofing materials. We've gone through over 100,000 feet of piping just to get from where the manifolds are, which is the device that we use to separate the propane into each window, to the windows. Then we had to come up with an ignition system for lighting each of these windows. And then we had to build each of these windows so that we could burn them over and over and over. Well, we had pipes buried under the set that were built into the set when the set was constructed, going to all the buildings so that at will we could dial up flames on, on each of the buildings and set the heights. Bring it up, now, 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 bring it up. There's a lot of possibilities of things going wrong. Hopefully, between myself and this incredible crew I've got working for me, we've worked all these possibilities out and we've taken the preventative measures so nothing will happen. We'll get with props, we'll get our buckets, bales and all that stuff. I'll get with special effects to make sure we got a water source. And this thing's totally lit up. It's gonna be so hot. And, and that's why we've gone through all the safety precautions of having like 30 and 40 Nomax suits and hoods and goggles for all the crew guys, the camera department, so that they can do their job and not have to worry about getting hot or singed or anything. incredible, isn't it? Molten lava in the middle of Los Angeles. All right, so how did they do it? Well, it was a combination of computer graphics, some miniaturized sets, and some plain old-fashioned ingenuity. You know, you can stick around and watch this, but I'm going to split. It's going to blow. It's going to blow. It's going to blow behind the bar. It's moving. Whenever an event like this occurs, you just have so many forces of nature released at once. Uh, your lava is around 2,300 degrees. The steam vents that come out of it create a lot of the ash as well as the smoke that just drifts everywhere. So we're trying to create the, almost that claustrophobic feel that it's everywhere. What you can't do when you're doing a movie is send out for a truckload of lava, have it delivered to the set and then film it. You've actually got to create that from nothing. The real stuff is just too impossible to handle. The overall plan for Volcano started out with a research phase where uh, we were working on uh, elements that we knew we needed to produce, such as flame, doing flame research, computer graphics, research of particle systems that can generate flame and smoke. At the same time, the miniature unit was experimenting with different types of materials to create a convincing looking lava. This is basically what we call the lava kitchen, and this is where we brew our lava. It starts out as methicil crystals. We uh, mix it with water, and we come up with a specific viscosity. It's goop. It's the same kind of stuff that you might find in a milkshake at a burger joint. It's, it's edible, it's, uh, it's just a, like a really good thickener. And we put all kinds of dyes and pigments and hit it with special light so that it glows and it looks like a hot substance. Someone came up with the ultraviolet lighting and the fluorescent tints in the lava, which give it a, just a beautiful glow. Methicil being a, uh, a water-based substance, it's sort of like a mirror, it reflects everything around it. But using ultraviolet light, which is a, a, an invisible light source, it doesn't reflect its, its source, so it, it just looks like a smooth, iridescent substance. The advantage to it is that it's a fluid and it really flows. So if there's a tree or a car in the way, we put something in there, it flows around it, you get these eddy currents, you get a crust, it kind of behaves in a really complex, interesting way that it takes a lot more trouble to synthesize inside a computer. If you synthesize something inside a computer, you have to take responsibility for every little particle in it, programming the way it moves. If you just get a bunch of goop that flows like lava, then it does that for you automatically. This is more than just sitting there. This is flowing and moving and interacting with the environment. So one of the biggest challenges is that it has to look, when you put it in the scene, like it's really there, and that things and people around it are being affected by it. 
Once we've established the data from the, uh, the, the plate that the lava is to be composited into, we, we scale everything down to a one-eighth version of, of what it was, and we build shapes out of a clear plastic uh, to uh, put in place where there are actually objects in the frame. The lava interacts with these shapes as it's traveling down the surface, and it actually gives a very realistic look as it's deflected and, and bent around these shapes. We have six tables, each of them is a gimbal. And depending on how we tilt the gimbals, we can uh, have the lava go in a certain direction. They put it on a fiberglass board, tilt the board, and the lava, so that the lava rolls right down towards the camera. Then we take it inside the computer and manipulate it so that it becomes even more hotter looking and, and scarier. Specifically for Volcano, there's quite a few different areas. Um, separated mainly into two areas. One is the addition of elements that we create synthetically on the computer. Stuff coming out of the volcanoes, flying out with these particle systems. That's a, a technical word for a way of animating the splashing lava metal material. We also create lava flow itself for a couple down uh, angle shots from the helicopter in the end. That lava is being tracked into some live action plates that were shot from the helicopter. And that lava flow is completely synthetic. We'd actually build a wireframe of the lava inside our computers, track it to the camera move, and shade it and color it. Give it a little bit of glow and then put some heat distortion and fire on it to make it look like actual lava. On the other side, we're using the computer in, in a fundamental fashion, which is the merging of imagery. We call that compositing. It's how you make everything look real and seamless. In its most basic form, compositing is taking two layers and integrating them into one finished layer. A pretty typical shot in Volcano for us has been using 20 layers or 30 layers to generate a finished shot. It appears to be absolutely unstoppable. And it doesn't move particularly fast, but it gets where it's going. And everything in its path just gets pulverized. It's just so damned hot. It's 2,000 degrees centigrade. It's relentless. The thing just keeps on coming. It has all those characteristics of the, the, the best movie villain. You can't kill it. You can fire bullets at it, but uh, it won't stop. It just keeps coming at you. It's a thrill. It's a ride. You know, it's, uh, it's intense, and uh, the monster's coming, and our heroes have to get away from the monster and somehow learn to defeat it. Can I get this guy some help? Yeah, I can see that. stay calm. So there you have it, an explosive behind the scenes look at the making of Volcano. I can promise you one thing, it's going to be hot. Man, I'm sick of this, I'm going home.